what inspired you to get into acting? What matters is the story and how you craft it. You've answered a lot of the questions already with that one answer, so that's fine. <laughs> Don't let it stop you. Use that as a motivator to help you get to where you want to go. And again, it, it just resonated with me because he's somebody at the top of his game and has been for a long time. And it's amazing that even fear comes into play for him too. Uh, I, I didn't think he could be fearful of anything as far as acting goes, but he is and he didn't let it stop him. There is a better place for all of us, Oregon. Coming July 13th to TBS. Across the uncharted American West, our intrepid pioneers set out for a new start and new adventures on the Oregon Trail. Oh my God, many a bald eagle. Ah! Ah! You just killed America. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on your favorite podcasting platform. Thank you. Welcome to Film Forums. I'm Richard Williams, and today I am joined by my co-host, uh, Millie Hayward, if you'd like to briefly introduce yourself as well. Hello, I'm Millie Hayward. I'm an aspiring actress and a scriptwriting student. Brilliant. And we're also joined by um, actor Tammy Dahlstrom. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Tammy Dahlstrom. I'm an actress and I'm based in Los Angeles. That's great. Thank you. So can you tell us how you got into acting in the first place? Uh, did you go to a film school, for example? Well, I actually started acting at the age of three, believe it or not. Um, being from a suburb of Los Angeles, uh, my mother used to get my photo taken by photographers just because she wanted pictures, um, both my sister and I. And during one of those se sessions, uh, the photographer just felt like we were naturally comfortable in front of the camera and suggested to my mom that she um, get us an agent. And that was, you know, we were not associated, you know, my parents were not associated with the industry, so that was foreign to them. But she's like, okay, so we did. And it didn't take long. And I started doing television commercials was really what I cut my teeth on. And I booked something right away. And uh, my sister and I continued to do that all growing up. And then later on, you know, I got a little older, probably like high, what would be high school, teenage years. And I was less interested in it at that time. I wanted to do other things, social things, you know, so sort of took a break. And then didn't get back into acting until college. So after, so early, you know, late teens, early 20s and studied film and communication in school and studied acting outside of college um, pr with private coaches and such. So that's really when I got back into it and seriously got into it and looking to do more than just a TV spot, uh, you know, like a commercial. So, yeah. That's cool. Um, you've appeared in hugely popular TV series like um, Criminal Minds, Grey's Anatomy, Silicon Valley, notably. Um, can you describe the process for landing your first role in a major series? Has it been a case of one major credit has led to another, has led to another, etc.? Has it not been quite as simple as that? Not quite as simple. <laughs> like many actors, we all have to audition. It's a process. It takes many more auditions than you see bookings, right? So um, you know, it's, I wish it were easier and simpler. And I wish there was a true path for everybody where, you know, you get educated, you understand the craft, you, you're really talented and you start booking work, but it doesn't, I don't think it happens like that anywhere in the world. Right. So we're all trying to network, trying to, to meet people, trying to get in the room so we can audition to then get in front of the right decision maker and land the job. I know my first TV role, um, notable uh, TV was a sitcom, a multicam. It was called Third Rock from the Sun. It was many years ago, right? It was a great show. And it was fun and unique because it was the first time not only was I doing like a real TV show, but it was also in front of a studio audience. So that was a whole unique experience to me, other than just doing plays and theater, which is very similar to, right? So you have to hold for laughs. You have to do, you know, do it again, but, but you do it again multiple times. It's not like a play where you just go straight through. Um, so that was unique. And again, auditions. And it was just a matter of networking, you know, a little bit of me networking, a little bit of my agent submitting and a little bit of luck, which I think is always involved in it all. Um, so that's, and then 
from there, it's just the continuing on that process and, and continuing to audition, continuing to meet more people, both in casting or producing or writing, directing all of the industry and networking that way. And then just making sure that you, you know, you're ready for the opportunity when it comes. Stick your hands up where the sun don't shine. You want me to stick my hands up my butt? What? It's where the sun don't shine. That would be my butt. That is what you said. Give me a break for a second. This is my first time sticking somebody up. I'm very nervous. What is your latest series, uh, Miracle Workers, about? And can you tell us a little bit about your role in it? it? It's fun, first of all. It's a comedy. It's set in the 1840s. And it is all about an idealistic small town preacher who reluctantly teams up with a wanted outlaw to sort of lead his people, his farm, this farm town uh, to a better life because our crops are not growing and haven't been growing year after year after year. And they've gotten to the point where we'll starve if we stay. So he gets this idea to lead us on the Oregon Trail and we're very willing. So not realizing, I think, quite the adventure that's ahead of us. So I'm one of the sort of what I call the farmer turned frontiers woman. Uh, Martha is my character's name. And I'm really just looking for a better life for me and for my family. Uh, and so we set out on this adventure um, and it becomes, you know, uh, more than we bargained for at times, uh, dangerous at times, scary at times, but in the end, well worth it. Fantastic. Um, I actually can't wait to watch it. Um, so when it came to developing your character in Miracle Workers, what kind of research did you do for your role? You know, um, the first thing I did was hit Google, right? You got to go. I mean, that's like a, everybody's best friend for research. Um, so I started out just reading as many articles, looking at as many photographs, trying to get um, as much insight as I could that way, and then turn to books. And one of the books I, I found the most fascinating was one that actually was recounting from the diaries and the stories of women on the trail, right? Because it's a different perspective. So it was just fascinating to, um, to see, you know, what they really went through. These were resilient people um, who had, were already coming from a harsh situation. You can imagine, you know, most people don't want to leave their house to go somewhere else unless there's a real reason. And they, the real reason was they weren't doing well. I mean, this was a hard life just being a farmer back then, let alone then if your crops aren't, aren't well or you've lost you know, your, your farm or for whatever reason they set out on the trail. And it was, it was tough times. Um, and then the interesting thing was once I got to, into costume and onto set, it really just came to life. I mean, it's not hard to drop into that era and that period when you were standing next to an oxen whose hip is like here, you know, you're, I mean, they're huge animals and there are wranglers and there are real wagons and you're in this costume that, you know, is just from that period. Every detail was so um, carefully crafted uh, by the production team. It, it was, uh, not hard to feel like you're in that moment. It was great. Neither Millie and I unfortunately have seen it yet. We will do as soon as it's available to us. Um, but the trailer looked fantastic. It looked really funny and uh, very authentically done. So it's, it's very, very impressive, I, I must say. I read a piece on you this week where you refer to the cast on the show, in particular Daniel Radcliffe and Steve Buscemi, as being the kindest um, that you've ever worked with. And that, that, that was interesting to me. Um, can you give us an insight into working with them and, and what you meant by that exactly? Absolutely. Um, and I will say that to everybody. Uh, it's well known that they are both very generous people just within the industry. And from the moment I stepped on set, it was obvious that they had a level of care and concern for everybody um, around. I remember um, Dan <clears throat> there was a group that he, of, of sort of the background actors that were, were he was working with in one particular scene. And I remember they were all in a covered wagon and it was, it happened to be very warm that day. We, when we started, it was cold, um, but it happened to be warmer that day. And, you know, they called cut. The scene happens. He gets out of the wagon. He walks across, you know, the set <clears throat> and, and the others are funneling out. And I just remember they yelled cut 
And we were all, okay, they're going to look at it. You know, it'll be a few minutes kind of is what they call. And he was standing there and immediately realized nobody told the extras that they could get out of the wagon and it was hot and he knew, and he ran across the set, you know, and just said, you guys can get out. You guys can get out. And it was just things like that, that it was that extra sort of care and attention just from one human being to another um, that you don't always find on set, um, you know, especially with the lead actors, the stars. But, you know, I have to say Steve was also incredibly um, giving and complimentary along the way. In the very beginning, working with him on a scene where I really had not a lot to say in the scene, but he and I had just sort of had an interaction nonverbal. And he turned to me as soon as they yelled cut. And he said, I love what was going on there. Like, I want you standing closer to me. This is so great. We're going to, you know, because we'll be able to cut away to you and then back to me. It's perfect. And it was just things like that where they're just giving actors, you know, there's no pretense there's, and these are two of the biggest names out there. Right. And there was just no, um, there was just a humility and a, a care and a, just a humbleness with them were just all peers. They made you feel, they made me feel like a peer from the very moment I went on set, which was just a pure joy. And it trickled down. Um, it was not only with the actors, but it was the whole entire crew. Um, the creators, Dan Merck and Robert Padnick, same thing. Super lovely from the very beginning. Uh, and, it, and it just made it such a joy and everybody just wanted to be there. Oh, fantastic. And um, so when it comes to advice, what one piece of advice would you give to other actors who are looking to work in the industry? I think my biggest piece is don't let fear stop you. Um, I know we all get fearful at times. We all get in our heads. We're our own worst critic, you know, when it comes to so much of what we do. Um, and I think it's funny, a, a great example of that was, I think we're all fall prey to that at every level. And I'm, there's one time in particular while we were filming the show where Dan has a really fun scene it's this whole dance number so look for it when you get a chance it's i think i don't i think maybe episode four i'm not sure which um but he had this one scene where he was phenomenal and i knew that he had worked really hard for that scene in preparation he learned a whole dance routine like he worked his buns off like trying to prepare for it and i said to him after i said wow i saw the footage it turned out amazing and he said to me, fear will do that to you. You know, and I, it was like, yes, because we're all afraid of, of lots of different things within our career, within our lives or whatever. But don't let it stop you. Use that as a motivator to help you get to where you want to go. And again, it, it just resonated with me because he's somebody at the top of his game and has been for a long time. And it's amazing that even fear comes into play for him too. Uh, I, I didn't think he could be fearful of anything as far as acting goes, but he is and he didn't let it stop him. And so I think that for me was the big, one of the biggest tips I walked away from with the show. So that would be my advice then to all of you. Mm -hmm. you, you may have already covered this in, in what, you've, what you've said, um, but just to sort of finish off really, what one thing looking back at your career um, would you say you wish you'd known before you very first started? So maybe not the Kellogg's advert um, and when you literally started, but when you started serious acting, so to speak, uh, adult acting, what, looking back now, what do you wish you'd known then? Um, that it's okay to fail. <laughs> um, we all take roles that stretch us and at times take us in a direction we don't want to go or are not what we expected or don't turn out as well as we wanted. And maybe that's our fault. Maybe it's not. A lot of the times it's not. It's the way something's edited or written or whatever, because there's so many cooks in the kitchen, right? But, um, but just don't give up and, um, and keep going. I, I think that that was, um, you know, what I, you know, I just wish that I could tell myself it'll all it'll all pay off later, you know, and, and the more you do this, the better you get. Right. I mean, which is why we start with smaller parts and then we get bigger parts and then we get bigger parts. 
and um, and that just to keep going and and have fun along the journey. It's a it's a marathon, not a sprint. So as long as you're in it um, for the journey, like it's fine. And I always was. I wasn't really looking at being famous, so to speak. That wasn't my goal. It was um, to create and artistically and have a, have fun with it. And sure, there are times where I've tried to walk away, uh, you know, and most actors and, and creators probably have as well, um, where it gets to be such a struggle and hard and you're like, oh, maybe I should try something else. And I did production for a while. I've, I've dabbled in a lot of that and still do some of that, but I've always gone back to acting because that's really where my heart lies. Um, so that's the case, you know, with everybody else too. like stick with it um, and and just be in it for the journey. That's a great way to end. I think I'd just uh, like to thank you so, so much for your time today. You've been uh, a fantastic guest. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. It's great talking to you. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on your favorite podcasting platform. Thank you.